If you're having any kind of issue with your A, B, X, or Y button on your Xbox controller, then this video is meant to help you out. There is a lot of different reasons why something can go wrong, so there's many different things I'm going to have you try. The first things I show you are not complicated at all, but eventually I get into ones where I take you inside the controller and have you do things inside. So start with the first solution and keep going through the list until your situation is resolved or until you reach the end of your comfort level as far as what you want to attempt. The things I show should, at least in principle, apply to all modern Xbox controllers, including ones from the Xbox One era, the Series X era, and the Elite series. Though if you have a Series 2 Elite, when we go to take things apart, there's going to be a lot of differences in the one that you have. So one of the main reasons something can go wrong is that dirt gets into the gap around the button. Take a thin piece of cardboard and make a wedge out of it, like so, and stick that wedge in the gap around the button that's given you the issue, and then just move it around. You should do it with the button pressed and the button unpressed. The idea is to scrape any dirt that's accumulated in there. Now you may have better luck if you take your wedge and cut the end of it off like this and then curve it slightly. You might be able to do a lot more with it that way. If things don't improve after doing this, go to the next solution. This one involves more cleaning, but this time we're going to apply suction to the gap around the button. Hopefully you have a vacuum cleaner with a detachable hose like this one and just apply suction to whatever button is giving you the issue. And once again, you should do this with the button pressed and the button unpressed. This is a good follow-up to the first solution since you might have scraped some dirt loose in there, or you may have gotten a piece of cardboard in there as well from your wedge. See if that helped, and if it didn't, proceed to the next solution. If the suction method did not work, try the opposite. Blow into the gap. You can try using a straw, you can use canned air. Some people will even put their mouths right on the controller and blow into it that way. At this point, you may also want to hit the like button on this video. If none of those outside cleaning methods have worked, then we may need to go inside. But first, let's throw one last Hail Mary, and it involves updating your controller to the latest firmware. You can either do this through your game system, or you can do it on a PC. If you're doing it on a game system, first make sure you've actually updated the system to the latest firmware. And once you have done that, here's how you update it on the controller itself. Go to Settings, Devices and Connections, Accessories. You'll see a picture of your controller. Click the three dots that are underneath it. If your controller has an update available, it'll say Update Now, and just click that and run it. If you're trying this on PC, you'll need to download the Xbox Accessories app. You'll see a picture of your controller, and you can click the three dots. And from there, you can run the update on the controller if there's one available. If nothing has worked so far, you now need to go inside the controller. But just a warning, anytime you're taking apart a device like this one, there is risk. You could end up breaking something. You could end up making the problem worse. I'm going to describe the process very carefully to minimize that risk, but the risk will never be zero. The first thing you need to do is take the grips off the handles on the controller. This is actually pretty tough to do because the grip is on there really tightly. What I do is press the trigger button down and insert a small tool into the gap that's right beside it. You want to do your best not to have the tool right up against that button. It scars very easily. My button is scarred up because I've gone into this controller multiple times and just learned my lesson after a while. But what you want to do is basically pull off that grip by doing a motion like this. If you have residue in that little gap around the grip, it's best if you clean that out because that's going to make the grip stick even harder than it actually does. So use a lot of force and take those grips off. Take the battery cover off if you haven't already and you'll need to remove all these screws indicated here. 
you'll need a Torx head screwdriver that's either a size 7, 8, or 9. Now, if you have a stubborn screw that won't turn, my suggestion is to put one drop of water on it, let it soak for a minute, tap the screw, and clean out any dirt that's around the screw. And that should increase your chances of it being able to turn. Then just lay it down like this and take the top shell off. FYI, you'll see me switching between two different controllers in this video just to show you some differences between the models. The main one I'm going to be using is the one that came with my Series X. Okay, so now you have further access to the buttons. You should try doing the cleaning methods again at this point. If it is dirt that's causing the issue, you're more likely to be able to get it out with the cover off like this. If nothing you did just now has helped the situation, it's time to move on to the next solution. This time we're going to go extremely deep and take the controller almost completely apart. First, remove the D-pad. It's being held down by this metal. You should be able to do this by just prying up on one side of it, and you should be able to pry it right out of there. Remove the metal piece that was holding the D-pad in. It comes off pretty easily. You just have to tilt it at an angle. Remove the analog sticks by just pulling them straight up. Next, take off the bottom shell. This happens rather easily. You just have to separate the two pieces. We're now going to remove a part from the top. It holds the bumper buttons on. There's two tabs that are holding it in place. You kind of loosen the grip that those tabs have. And at the same time, pull up in the middle part. You'll either get one small piece or one long piece that comes off. If it's a long piece, it's actually two pieces that are together. If only the short piece came off, you can take off the long part of it. It's held on by tabs that are located on the outside and you just pry up on one of them. There are these little motors that are in the LT and RT buttons and you'll see a couple of wires going into the motor. Make sure you pay attention to how that wire is positioned and how it's tucked into the gaps because we're going to remove these motors from the inside of the buttons and when you put everything back together, you'll need to situate those wires the same way. You could use your cell phone to take a picture of it just to show the positioning of the wires. So each of those buttons has a screw in it and you just remove that screw. From this point forward, the screws are a smaller size. I had to use a size three Torx. With the screw out, you now have to take the cover off the motor. The best way to do it is to flip it open like a book with the binder being the notch that's right here. You wanna just grab that motor and keep it from hitting the ground. For each motor, you'll wanna untuck the wires that are leading to it. Just be very careful in handling the motor and the wires. They lead all the way back to the board. You're just gonna leave them hanging off to the side. Next, remove these two screws in the corners. Then disconnect these cables here. They just come right off. On my older controller, there's only one cable to remove. Now we are going to take that smaller board and flip it around like this. And as you flip it around, you want to make sure it doesn't snag those two wires that you just now disconnected. And we're just going to lay the board off to the side like this. Remove this jack right here if it hasn't fallen off already and just lay it aside. Now we're going to remove the last set of screws. We can now remove the last remaining board where we can do our work. Remove this sync button that's at the top of the controller if it didn't come out on its own already and just lay that aside. 
start by removing this silicone pad. Clean both sides of it with a wet Q-tip. I'm a little bit hesitant to put alcohol on it because that might be harmful to the material. You also wanna make sure the material is not damaged. When you press on the little nubs, they should reflex back into position. If this part needs to be replaced, check out the affiliate links that are in the description of this video, or you can just grab it from another controller. Also clean those contacts that were underneath the pad. For this part, you can use alcohol. Bear in mind that three of the contact points are on one board, and the one for the B button is on the other board. Next, you'll want to turn your attention to the buttons themselves. You can remove them from the shell and just examine them and see if they need to be cleaned and see if they need to be replaced. Once again, this is a part that you can order. You can clean the area that was holding the buttons with a toothbrush. I've now exhausted all my advice on how to make your button function properly. From this point forward, I'm just going to show you how to put everything back together again. Put your buttons back in. You just rotate them and they'll eventually fall into place. Also make sure these buttons over here haven't dislodged themselves. If so, just put them back into place. And then put the padding back on top of them. This padding will only go down properly if all the buttons are 100% down inside their slots. Put this sync button back into place. Then reinsert this board like this. Then reinsert these screws. Put this jack back into place. The little metal contacts need to face upward. Then take the other board and flip it back around and lay it on top of the bigger board. Bear in mind, as you join those two boards together, there's a socket right here that has a male end that needs to go into the female end. As you do this, you'll want to make sure that these two little wires that you disconnected earlier go through the little gaps that are on that board. Then snap those wires back into their connectors. Now this can be a big pain in the butt because the parts are so small and you have to have it situated perfectly to snap it into place. And by the way, the older controllers only had one cable that snapped into place. Put these two screws back into the corners. Now we're going to put these motors back into place. The wires on those need to come out toward the middle of the controller. We'll do the tucking part in a minute here. And what you'll need to do is hold the motor in place as you put the cap back on top of it. It's kind of tricky, but there's a little notch on the side and you'll want to push that end in first and then push down on the side that has the screw hole in it. And then just put the screws back in. Now we're going to tuck in those wires. This part is a pain because the gap that you have to put it in is just very tiny and the wire is kind of fragile. So just take your time and tuck it into the gap and around the various notches that you see. Next, we're going to put this part back on. Everything just snaps into place. Put the D-pad back into place. You have to situate it just right. There's four little notches on it, and one of those has a rounded edge. That rounded edge corresponds to the down arrow. Then put the metal casing over top of that. It might take some doing, but eventually it'll snap right into place. Put the analog caps back on and put the two outer shells back into position. And put these screws back in. Let me know in the comments if this video worked for you. Have a good day, everybody.